we're live. What's up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of the Undergrad Forum. Now in this video we're continuing our Nutrition 101 series. Here I have Lauren, co-host and self-proclaimed nutrition expert, and today we're going to talk about carbohydrates. It's an important part of everyone's diet. It seems to be a, something that we eat a lot, so we should probably learn about carbohydrates in general. What do you got, Laura? Well, one thing that I just want to say is some people have heard about the low-carb versus high-carb diet. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of controversy out there, and I always recommend do what works for you and what works for your body. But I thought we might take this time to just sort of understand what carbohydrates do, because not all carbs are the same. So, um, Mo, what are some of your favorite carbohydrate foods that you like? That's a good question. So, prior to starting med school, I had no idea that like, I should even know what a carb is. I just ate whatever I wanted. So I was eating potato chips, bagels, English muffins, bread, whatever the heck I wanted, cereal. I was just eating every carb under the ocean. Then I got into med school and I realized this isn't all that great. And it's the notion of I didn't cut down my carbs, eliminate them. I just realized some things made me feel better for studying. So as a student, I just figured out some carbs that work. So like being Persian, I like white rice a lot. I grew up on it. Now I eat brown rice. It practically tastes the same if you know how to cook it. Um, I being a chef expert, it's easy. Um, so I eat brown rice now. It's like my main rice that I enjoy. I don't eat bagels. I don't eat English muffins. And when I eat bread, it's whole grain. So I keep it simple and no potato chips, no white potatoes, something called sweet potatoes. I think people call them yams. I don't know the difference. Mm -hmm. So those three simple things, brown rice, yams, and um, whole grain bread. Okay. And Mo makes a great point. Switching over from white rice to brown rice is a very you know, simple transition for most people. But if you <coughs> find you really don't like the taste of the brown rice... Get over it. Um, <coughs> no, you can ease yourself into it. So make half white rice, half brown rice, and mix them together. That's good. And then start to slowly wean yourself off. Now, Mo also brought up a great point about how the carbs are sort of making him feel. And I have a lovely diagram and chart that I'm sure you guys are just are so excited to see? to see. So this is what I made for you guys. Okay, this I'm, is, I'm gonna go look this, I'll tell you how, to, you can keep going. Okay, this is basically to help you understand what the carbs are doing to your body. So we first start out here with baseline blood sugar level. So let's talk about the y-axis, this is blood glucose, and the x-axis is time. So if we look across here, we have our baseline blood sugar level. That's a dotted line. That's your dotted line here. Now let's see what happens after we eat white rice. White rice is what's known as a refined carbohydrate. So I know I'm going into a little bit more detail than you probably want to hear, but a refined carbohydrate basically takes your whole grain and strips off the wheat, the bran, the germ, and just leaves you with the starch. Starch, think of it as sugar. That's, sugar. This is a very simplistic explanation, but just go with me on this. And that's important. But basically you have your white rice and you can see it causes your blood glucose levels to increase really high and then your body senses that and what does it, what does it produce, Mo? Insulin? Insulin, yeah, it makes insulin and we take that sugar out of the blood. The problem is, is uh-oh, now we're way below baseline. Way below. What is that going to make you do? It's going to make you hungry, it's going to make your body want to get more energy because it's lost that blood sugar. Right. Now let's contrast this with brown rice. So we see the brown rice, yes we have an increase in blood sugar from baseline, but it's more of a sustained release because your body has to go through the effort of breaking down that wheat and germ, and so the sugar actually gets released a lot more slowly. So you can see here that over time, your blood sugar just sort of coasts. It doesn't have that dramatic spike and drop. So those are just the points I want to illustrate about carbohydrates. And if you have any questions about this, feel free to send us an email. Some quick tips about some good carbs. Mo gave some great examples. The sweet potatoes, the brown rice, and whole grains. Um, a little note about whole grains. Oh, that's a good one. Bring them up. I like to tell you Preach guys. It, sister. I like to tell you guys the funny things that the food companies do to kind of trick you. So when you think whole grain, make sure it's actually like a whole grain where you see like the seed or you see like you know, the grainy part right. of it. That's what it's a real chewy. whole grain is. Yeah. yeah, it's chewy. Whole grain bread, a lot of times they'll take white bread, add molasses to it, and just say it's wheat bread. Yeah. Uh, that's not really the same. When you take uh, a whole grain, it's not, it's preserved that wheat, the bran, the germ. And that's what's important. So be sure to be reading your food labels and look for things like, you know, enriched white flour. That's just white flour. Added with, you know, 
uh, some vitamins. It's not really the whole grain. So if you'd like more information about this, please send us an email or write comments and we'll get you more information. But thanks for sticking in with us. All right, so now let's go to our Q&A session. College students are thinking, okay, how am I going to modify my diet? I'm living in a dorm. Yeah. There's like the cafeteria thing I go to or whatever yeah. it's called. How do, I, how do I know what to eat, what should I not eat? So let's give some like real life advice. If there's pizza, can I eat it? Okay. The don't eat, do eat is really hard because, I ha it's really hard for me to say because, you know, you can't deprive yourself of things that you really like. So if you really like this pizza, enjoy it. If you're so-so on it, then pick a better alternative. You know, just make smart choices. What are your priorities? I think that's what's key. So when it comes to the pizza, if you have an option for the whole grain versus non-whole grain uh, crust, go with the whole grain. You probably won't notice a difference. If you want to make your pizza healthier, less cheese, extra vegetables, extra sauce, like easiest modifications you can sauce make. Sauce is okay? Yeah, sauce is good. Sauce is good. Okay, sauce is good. good. I didn't know that. It has vegetables in it. Okay. <laughs> um, or, you know, have your piece of pizza, but then have a big salad with it. Right. So you're adding in some fiber and you're adding in some vegetables that you're probably not getting with the pizza on its own. And I remember in college, there was always like a dish that had either like grilled chicken or some kind of salmon. People just never touched it because there was always something like deep fried next to it. Yeah. So the healthy options are there. So could the person say, this is a crazy idea, could they spend like five days a week eating okay and have like a day or two of like a cheat day possibly? I think that's a fair thing to do. I think that whatever works for you is what you gotta do. If you need a cheat meal or snack or something every day, okay, make that compromise. You know, right. as long as you're finding a balance and finding something that you can live with, that's what's most important. And how about a compromise that lets you study well? So is that gonna be covered in our next video? Yes, it will. All right, guys, stay tuned. Click on the link below to the next video. And as always, enjoy your studies.